The Nintendo Switch has already been out for two years? I still remember the original trailer for the Switch and getting so pumped for the future of Nintendo. And in the past two years, I've been more than satisfied. I figured I'd celebrate the anniversary of Nintendo's hybrid device by making a list of my personal top 20 favorite Switch games. This list is a bit special though, in the fact I didn't include a single Wii U or last generation port, such as Mario Kart 8 and Skyrim. Don't get me wrong, I adore a lot of those games, such as Bayonetta 2, but I really wanted to highlight the more original content the Switch has to offer. So let's get started. I'll start at the bottom and work up to the top. Kirby made his debut on the Switch in Kirby Star Allies, which has a heavy focus on co-op play and combination abilities. I enjoyed the game overall, but as a big Kirby fan, I expected a little bit more from it. For a full-priced game, it was quite short, and didn't have enough compelling side content to keep me interested in the way some past Kirby games could. While it's a solid game, I'm hoping to see Kirby undergo some interesting changes for the next mainline entry. However, if you're a big Kirby fan like me, Star Allies is definitely worth playing. It's also the most beautiful looking Kirby game to date. Tetris 99 is one of the latest sensations of the Battle Royale craze. And no, it isn't Tetris blocks running around shooting each other, even though that would be pretty cool. You're tossed into a group of 99 players and battle it out in the most intense Tetris match of your life. And you want to know the best part? It's free! Well, as long as you're a member of Nintendo's online service. It's a unique spin on gaming's biggest current trend. Speaking of Tetris, have you ever wondered what it'd be like if you mashed Puyo Puyo and Tetris together? Yeah, me neither, but apparently Sega did. The fusion of the two iconic puzzlers results in a chaotic and strategic battle for victory. You can also play just normal Puyo Puyo or Tetris if you feel like it. It's a great package with plenty to do, and is a must buy for those who love puzzle games. Even if its story mode is completely bonkers. While I was Tetris King, I learned I could cross between worlds. And from then on, I became the Keeper of Dimensions. But my days were spent in solitude. My only companion... Koei Tecmo and Nintendo teamed up once again to bring us another crazy hack and slash with Fire Emblem Warriors, mixing together the popular strategy RPG series with the distinct warrior style of gameplay. The Fire Emblem elements of the game, like the weapon triangle and support system, adds deeper mechanics and strategies to the game, compared to something like Hyrule Warriors. I'm a big Fire Emblem fan myself, and enjoyed this game quite a bit, despite it being held back by some of its more mediocre traits, like a throwaway story. Mother knew what to do without her. We're worse than helpless. The Mario Party series has had a bit of an identity crisis in its most recent entries, but things are finally starting to get back on track, thanks to Super Mario Party. Not only does it bring back the classic style of gameplay that we all love, but it also features the most diverse set of modes in the series. Sure, it could have used a few more boards and a few fixes to the balancing of the game, but things are definitely looking brighter for the future of this series. This is the most fun I've had with Mario Party since the original N64 titles. Congratulations. Climbing a mountain has never been quite as fun as it is with Celeste, a heartwarming journey filled with plenty of tough platforming. Indie games have planted a well-deserved spot in the Switch's expanding library of games, and Celeste is definitely one of the best. It's not just a journey of jumping and dashing, but an emotional journey as well. While on the topic of indie games, there's another fantastic platformer in the form of The Messenger. Creatively mixing together both an 8-bit and 16-bit aesthetic, The Messenger puts you in the shoes of a ninja on a path to deliver a scroll. But things aren't quite as simple as they seem. The game offers a lot of laughs through its hilarious writing, 
and isn't afraid to give players a challenge. If you're a fan of old school platformers, do yourself a favor and buy this game. Monster Hunter World set a high bar for the popular Capcom series, but Monster Hunter Generations Ultimate has some of the most extensive content you'll find in the series. There are so many monsters to hunt, so many weapons and armor sets to craft, so much to see, find, explore, there's just so much to do here. While the gameplay isn't as fast and fluid as Monster Hunter World, it still tests players in challenging and exciting battles with fearsome creatures, whether you're playing alone, with friends, or with random hunters online. It has a big learning curve, which can be a turnoff for some, but at the end of the day, this game is worth every penny. Mario Plus Rabbit's Kingdom Battle is the crossover no one could have predicted. A strategy game featuring a cross between Mario characters and those annoying Ubisoft animals? Preposterous. But it actually happened, and not only that, it turned out great. The fact I was able to enjoy this game despite my complete hatred for rabbits is a testament to how well crafted this game is. It's not a perfect game by any means, but for such a crazy idea, they really made something special. This is a game suited well for any age, and dare I say the rabbits aren't even that annoying here. They even got a few laughs out of me. I'm not afraid to admit this game went way above my expectations. <laughs> A lot of Metroidvania games have come out of the indie scene, but few of them are on the level of Hollow Knight. The beautiful hand-drawn graphics instantly captivated me, and the isolating, often claustrophobic atmosphere really puts you at odds with the dark, twisted world and its evil bug creatures. This game is essentially what happens when you mix Dark Souls with Metroid, and I'm not just saying that because it's difficult. I loved every minute I spent with this game, and highly recommend playing it if you're a Metroid fan itching for a game of similar quality to play. I've been a Sonic fan ever since I was a small child. I grew up with the Genesis titles, but after many years, I lost a lot of interest in the series as it became more and more distant with what made me love it to begin with. Then, finally, Sonic Mania came along and showed that a great 2D Sonic game can still be made. It perfectly blends nostalgia with new ideas. There's enough both old and new here to satisfy any classic Sonic fan. Sonic Mania reignited my love for the blue blur, so much so that I bought Sonic Forces, which I still regret to this day. Mania, however, sits safely as one of my favorite Sonic games to date, and was improved even further with the updated version called Sonic Mania Plus. Here's hoping Sega can give us even more 2D Sonic games of this caliber. Pokemon Let's Go mixed together the traditional RPG elements of the series with aspects of its mobile cousin, Pokemon Go. The result is a return to the Kanto region with an interesting twist. Also, did I say that right? Kanto? Kanto? I don't know. Gone are the random encounters. You now see the Pokemon right in the overworld. There are also neat touches like having a buddy Pokemon follow along right behind you. Don't even get me started on how adorable Eevee is. This is a great starting point for new fans of the series as well as old school fans like myself who have a deep love for the first generation of Pokemon. Fire Emblem with guns. That's essentially what Valkyria Chronicles 4 is. The fourth entry in Sega's strategy series is a must play for anyone who enjoys tactical gameplay. The gorgeous art style and expressive characters give the game a distinct look that isn't found anywhere else. The story has many twists and turns to keep players interested, as well as having its fair share of emotional moments. But the true selling point lies in the gameplay. Every move you make counts, whether you're trying to capture an outpost or getting the perfect shot on a tank from behind. 
Each unit has their own unique characteristics, giving a deeper meaning to choosing a squad for a mission. This is also one of those games I consider to be perfect for handheld play. Too easy. Octopath Traveler puts players in the shoes of eight separate protagonists, all forging their own path through the world. The game is displayed through a beautiful 16-bit HD art style with an absolute stellar soundtrack. The turn-based mechanics give the player plenty to work with, and the job system adds more layers on top of that. The story is split in eight pieces, giving each character their own spotlight, and while it can sometimes feel like the pace suffers from it, I always looked forward to reaching the next chapter, for better or for worse. Octopath Traveler is a unique RPG that easily sits as one of my favorites of the genre, and one of the biggest surprises on the Switch. I am not made for such battles. After being buried for eight long years, Capcom finally grabbed the shovel and dug up the Blue Bomber, reviving him in the form of Mega Man 11. I should come out and say I'm a huge Mega Man fan. In fact, it's my favorite gaming series. I mean, specifically, it would be Mega Man X, but I have a lot of love for the classic Mega Man as well. I had huge expectations for this game, and thankfully, it met them. This is action platforming at its best. Each level has its own feel, every boss has a striking appearance and unique pattern to learn, the gear system gives players more options of how to overcome challenges, the music is solid, the graphics are crisp, and the selection of special weapons is quite possibly the best in the entire series. There are so many tweaks and improvements made to the gameplay to make it feel faster and more fluid than ever before. Mega Man 11 instantly shot up to being one of my favorite in the series. In fact, it may actually be my favorite classic series title. It's just that good. Splatoon 2 improved upon just about every aspect of the original Wii U title, but still kept the core gameplay intact, which is just as addicting as ever. There's nothing quite like this unique colorful shooter, whether you're getting new gear, playing some Salmon Run, or fighting it out in a Splatfest, there's always fun to be had in this wacky world. And while the sole aspect I considered to be lacking at release was the single player, Nintendo eventually released the incredible Octo Expansion, which is the best single player offering Splatoon has had to date. Xenoblade Chronicles 2 is a journey I don't think I'll ever forget. I felt a strong connection to all of the main characters. The story is both a battle for survival filled with deep, philosophical undertones, as well as an emotional roller coaster. The strategic RPG gameplay is elevated by the Blade system, with so many mechanics revolving around it that it would take too long to explain it all right now. The beautiful landscapes of each titan are a joy to discover, with some of them looking like something out of a dream. I could go on and on about this game, but I'll keep it short. If you're a fan of JRPGs, you should absolutely play this game. It's also worth checking out the prequel, Torna the Golden Country, a huge expansion that is tied to the story of the main game. As someone who has played all of the Xenoblade titles thus far, this title rests at the top as my favorite. I'm in. Let's go to Elysium. I'll take you there myself. Thank you, Rex. Super Mario Odyssey is the 3D Mario game I have always wanted. No more getting booted out of a level after collecting a Power Star, or Power Moon here. Exploration and experimentation are the name of the game. Capturing enemies and objects puts a twist on how to get to where you want to go. Each kingdom makes a name for itself through colorful environments and memorable layouts, as well as a clever inclusion of 8-bit Mario segments seamlessly woven into the levels. There are hidden goodies everywhere, and finding all of them is a complete joy. Even just running around and jumping is fun, largely due to there being hardly any restrictions on how to control Mario in this game. 
you can pull off some pretty crazy stunts. For quite a long time, Banjo-Kazooie was my favorite 3D platformer, but it was finally topped by Mario's latest amazing adventure. It's no secret to anyone that follows this channel that I am a huge Smash Brothers fan. And Super Smash Bros. Ultimate raises the bar so high for the series that it's doubtful it'll ever be topped. The roster is just crazy. Everyone is here, even characters like Young Link and Pichu. Then there's the stage list, which has over 100 stages to choose from. Sakurai and his team went above and beyond to bring fans the best Smash Bros. game ever. And while World of Light seems to be a more controversial aspect of the game, I personally quite enjoyed it. The real magic, however, happens in multiplayer. This is where Smash Bros. has always shined the most, and it's even better in Ultimate. The small changes to gameplay really add up and give it a faster feel, like fighters being launched faster and increased damage in 1v1s. I'd also argue Classic Mode is the best it's ever been. The online could still use some touching up, but it's at least better than it was in Smash 4. I've spent a lot of hours in battle arenas, and I know I'll be spending hundreds more with this game. game. Open your eyes. Open your eyes. Wake up, Link. I still remember my first time stepping out into the world of Hyrule and Breath of the Wild. I felt almost bewildered. Was this really The Legend of Zelda? Was I dreaming? Where was the long, drawn-out opening tutorial? Where was the partner character constantly nagging me to pull a switch or find a key? All of those traits were left behind in favor of giving the player absolute freedom. The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild was a bold step in a new direction for the series. Players forge their own paths through the world. The experience is unique to each individual, which is part of what makes the game so special. Exploration is constantly rewarded, with so much to find and so much to do. Even the puzzle solving is not held back by a linear structure. The physics give so much freedom that there are multiple solutions to the puzzles. I don't want to say too much about the game though. If you haven't played it yet, you deserve to go in the same way I did, with as little knowledge on the game as possible. This is a game I wish I could erase from my memory just to experience it for the first time again. My original 120 hour playthrough was a magical journey, one that I will cherish as one of the best gaming experiences I have ever had. And although I know some people consider this to be a Wii U port, both versions of the game were released on the same day, so it falls into a gray area for me. Plus, the Switch version is the best way to play it without a doubt. Well, that's it. In only two years' time, the Switch has already received a ton of new amazing games, and we have even more coming this year. Now, of course, the lists like this are heavily subjective. I can only speak for myself, so what would your list look like? Let me know in the comments below. That's all from me, so thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you later.